body positive or are you just a trend of 2019? Now, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when I tell you that I'm a model? I can guarantee you a little bit about my size and the way that you see my beauty. Now, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when I tell you that I'm a plus size model? Now, these two things often come up a lot. Usually when I'm in a taxi on the way to a job and the driver asks me what I do for a living. The problem that we have is that we solely judge everyone on our appearance. So I'm in the taxi and the driver says, I say I'm a model and he's like, oh, she's a bit big. And then I say I'm a plus size model and he says, oh darling, you don't have to say that. Like the term plus size is a negative thing. Now, growing up in the 90s, the poster girls of my era were Britney and Christina. And as much as I loved them, my body never looked like theirs in those spaghetti strap mini dresses and buffalo platforms. Now, I remember in school that I had to wear boys' PE shorts because the others just simply didn't fit. And I remember the question that was always asked, does my bum look big in this? And the answer being, no, 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 definitely, definitely not. In 2012, I was scouted in an East London pub dancing to Diana Ross and got asked to do a shoot as the late, great Anna Nicole Smith. Now, not only was she one of my idols, and I really loved the photographer that was shooting, I knew that my nan would love the pictures. And she's always been the one who's taught me to be unapologetically myself. Now, little did I know that I would have a career as a plus-size model seven years later. I was one of the first of my age in the UK. And when there is no one out there who you feel is representing you, why would you ever think that it was a possibility that that could be your career choice? Now, I'm not going to say it was easy. I was broke for many years. I remember when the Olympics was on, my landlord kicked me and my best friend out of our apartment because he wanted to rent it for much higher rent. We couldn't afford a moving van, so I borrowed a shopping trolley from the local supermarket, and there we were, pushing our belongings down the road. We found a, two rooms, I think it was, above a pub in Stepney Green. And as I'm there, pushing my, my trolley along, I think I had a box of records and a mannequin in there, I got a notification on my phone, and it said, cover star Felicity Hayward. And there I am, broke, couldn't afford a moving van, and I'm now the face of ID magazine. Now, this was when body positivity really started for me. Body positivity itself has been around for a long time, but it was then when it became popular. It became popular online because Instagram became the big platform that everybody used. And I found a community of people who were different. They weren't seen as, in society as beautiful because of their age, their race, their size, their ability, their gender. And they used the term body positivity in such an amazing way that get, made everyone kind of be together. That was their type of beauty. And even though no one else thought it, that was the community. That was the community that inspired me to continue my career. Now, Let's fast forward to 2019, and let me ask you that question again. Does my bum look big in this? The thing is, <laughs> thanks babes. <laughs> Your bum could not be big enough. And this time we have the new poster girls of our generation, the Kardashians. A family run enterprise who make billions of pounds every single year endorsing beauty, fashion, lifestyle. This is their bodies. <laughs> they have now made curvy trendy. Now, I don't know if you believe this, but you know, those bodies aren't real. They have been modified. And they are online telling you that's how they were born. Now, what I have a problem with is the influence of these women and the women that, that see them online. We have models and influencers who are inspired by the Kardashians that are going to get their bodies altered 
And they're telling their followers, oh, this is natural. This is my new gym routine or my new diet. When really they're going under the knife. The problem that I have is when people like this are lying to their communities online. Now, I don't want you to think that I have a problem with anyone getting any surgery. If you want to get a boob job, you want to get fillers, you want to get your lips done, that's totally fine. It's your life and you should be able to do what you want to do. The problem that I have is when people lie about what they have had done and they are in a position of influence. I don't think you guys understand how serious this is. Last year, Kim Kardashian promoted an appetite suppressant lollipop, right? Now, I'm not sure about you lot, but when I fancy something sweet, I usually go for a pina colada. I don't go for a lollipop because these things are targeted at children and teenagers. So here we have a mother of four promoting something to the eyes of young people, telling them that it will stop them feeling hungry. Now, it doesn't just stop there. Only two weeks ago, we had a young girl who wanted to get that summer body. A young student who overused these flat tummy tees, and she died. All because of the women online who are lying to you about their bodies and these ideals of what is beautiful. Now, we also have girls in the USA who are undergoing illegal surgeries. Illegal surgeries by non-professionals. They're getting concrete injected into their bodies to look like these women. And they are dying of infections. <laughs> We've gone from starving ourselves in the 90s to injecting our bodies now. What for? A trend? <laughs> what I am worried about is what is going to become the next big trend? Massive ears? Stretched feet? Now, I know that sounds ridiculous, but don't you think all of these young women getting all of these things done to themselves, they all look the same, kind of ridiculous too. When I started my career, and when I started my body positive movement, I wanted to create a space where I felt that my little sister could grow up in, understanding that she was beautiful. No matter if she got stretch marks, cellulite, acne, or she developed skin conditions such as vitiligo or alopecia, that she is beautiful for who she is and who she will become. Body positivity, for me, is about self-love. And like they say on board flights, you have to look after number one before you can help others around you. Now, if you guys want to help stop this sort of nonsense happening, and if you have an online platform, unfollow people <laughs> online as you would in real life. Unfollow those people that are promoting these awful, awful diet products. You don't understand the power of your likes and your engagement. If everybody stopped, this wouldn't exist. The problem that I have is she doesn't need the money to promote these lollipops. Why is she doing it? She's doing it because we live in an age where likes and engagement is worth more than someone's life. That's how I feel. If there's one thing that I want you guys to take away from this, it's to understand that the perfect body does not exist. As there are no two humans on this planet that are the same. So you have to aspire to be the best version of yourself and not someone else. Be true to you and be true to others. And always remember, self-love brings beauty. Thank you.